Now I can't prove it, but I think there are more hopper patterns than the approximately 11,000 species of grasshoppers on Earth. Well, I've added to the horde of hoppers with the lovable Mr. Peanut Hopper. I've been fishing this guy for over a decade and like it because it's easy to tie, durable, buoyant, and because it catches fish. Let's tie Mr. Peanut. Before you get to the hook, you need to have the foam strip. Buy two-toned, one-quarter inch foam strips if you can find them. Otherwise, buy sheets of two-toned foam and then cut them with a paper cutter or with your scissors. Here are two color variations, but I use yellow and dark brown for this fly. Take the foam strip and make one cut on an angle, not quite in the middle of the strip. Now do the same on the other side of the foam. It'll look like the dullest arrow ever known to mankind. Okay, let's get to the hook. Start your thread toward the back of the hook with either cream or yellow thread. Now wind the thread fast enough to give yourself carpal tunnel. If your thread doesn't burst into flames, you're winding too slowly. Finish at the back and grab your piece of foam. Set it on the hook with a little overlap out the back and make three wraps. With all of these sections, four total, you will wrap three times increasing the pressure with each wrap. Just work up the hook and be careful since the foam will want to spin on you. Simply wrap up the shank, but don't wrap so hard that you break the foam. Also, each section gets a little smaller when you tighten it down, and you want these all to be about the same size. Make sure to end away from the hook eye and give the thread a few wraps. Give the foam a few gentle tugs to settle everything. To turn the fly upside down and cover all the thread wraps with Zapagap, I would use a super soaker filled with Zapagap on this fly if possible, so leave no foam unturned. <laughs> Hilarious. Return your hopper to its upright position, and yes, you guessed it, add Zapagap over the thread wraps. Now quickly, for those who aren't familiar with hair stacking, take about a pencil and a half of elk hair in your hand and snip it off at the base. Use an old hair comb to get the junk out of the bottom and then set the elk hair inside the hair stacker tips down. Now as Bob Ross would say, shake the devil out of it. But in actuality, really enough to settle the hair. Remove the metal insert and grab the tips of hair. Quickly get any smaller junk pieces, and that's your elk hair. Before you put on the elk hair, make sure that the glue is dry, but don't glue your finger now. You can also add some flash at this point if you like. Set your elk hair on top to measure it, and put the tips about at the end of the hopper. Then cut off the back of the elk hair so that you have about an additional one half inch. This should hang over the back of the foam. Make two loose wraps around the hair and tighten down. This method is the Kelly Gallup method of tying down hair, by the way. You don't cut the hair with this technique. Continue to make a few more wraps and keep the hair in place. I also wrap a few times through the tips of the hair for durability. Then coat these tips with a glorious Zapagap. After this, fold the foam back so that it forms a nice hopper head. Don't go too far over the eye of the hook though. Like with the other foam segments, start off with light tension and increase it as you wrap. Pinch the foam to tame it a little bit. Also, don't worry if there's a little bit of hair visible right now, since you should already be wrapping through it. To make the legs, tie a knot in two rubber legs here brown. Now bring one up and position it right in the middle of the foam head with the knot at the end of the foam. The back half of the leg should point downward. 
Make a couple thread wraps around the rubber leg and make sure to leave Mr. Peanut a nice arm in the front. You're going to do the same thing here, but you can see it a lot better this time. When Mr. Peanut gets his legs, he likes to grab the thread. Okay, enough creepy Mr. Peanut talk. Before you really clamp down, though, make sure that the leg is positioned where you want it here. You can adjust the leg if it's wrong, like I do here. Make a few wraps, but you can save these for the whip finish as well. Now chop off his legs. I mean, snip off the rubber legs to allow you to whip finish easier. Finish with a whip or three and magically make your thread disappear. Now cut the foam on top, which you can do at any time. The key is to make sure that it is a straight cut and that the foam piece is less than a quarter inch. Measure out the front leg to the end of the foam or a little less, bring it forward and cut the other leg to the same length. Now in Guido-like fashion, stretch the legs and cut them to half inch past the knot. Oh yeah, bring on the Zappa Gap. Cover any and all thread wraps with a generous portion of Zappa Gap. This is really important to making a durable fly. Finally, separate the legs on the front and back with your bodkin. When you're done, you should have four legs up front. You will also have four in the back, but you need to cut the top leg past the knot, like I do here. Just give it a snip, but don't go too close to the knot. As expected, more zappa gap. Add a little dollop of zappa gap to the knots. This really doesn't help that much, but it makes me feel good. Put a top hat on him, he's done. You can whip these guys out pretty quickly in a bunch of colors and present them to a big brown rainbow cutty or brook near you. Well that does it for Mr. Peanut Hopper. If you like this video we'd love it if you subscribed or check out our site to flyfish.com to see more videos and articles on cold, warm and saltwater flies and fish. Now get out and fish. Thank you.